how's it going everyone? I'm King Blacktooth and I wasn't going to make another video, it's getting quite late. I'm making video after video after video. However, somebody has sent me some cards and some card information that we've never seen before and they're really interesting. So I really want to share them with you. So this video is just full of beautiful card goodness. Okay, so first let me credit the guy, Mikhail Solviog. Uh, the first let me credit the guy, his name is Mikhail Solovyov. I think that's probably how it is. It's probably not how you say it. Let me just see. Mikhail Solovyov. Okay, so <laughs> there's text to speech for you. Mikhail, thank you. It's really nice. It's, it's, I, as far as I'm aware, he's decided to just send it to me, which is really cool that people are including me and I'm getting stuff to share. It makes me feel super happy, super cool. And uh, thanks for sending it to me. So let's get started with these uh, cards. We're going to do a bit of speculation and a bit of uh, uh, discussion on the cards. And, and feel free to do so in the comments below after the fact as well. So the first card we're going over is Ragnarug. This is a golden special card. Okay. Play Frost, Fog and Rain. So if you remember from my previous video, I said how the deck limits are starting to change. So cards are being classified into bronze, silver and gold now. Okay. And special cards are coming into that fold as well. Usually the deck limits for special cards were like you can have maximum 10 special cards. But now they're starting to bring those in. So uh, special cards can be gold and they're competing with golden heroes. And uh, they can be silver and they're competing with silver character cards that are units and stuff. So it's more competitive. And so this is a golden special card. Play Frost, Fog and Rain. So it puts all three on the board. And from the background it's apparently neutral card okay because we've got other examples to come where it actually shows you if it's red for monsters and green for square tell so i mean there's some examples where this could be useful monsters could utilize this quite heavily i would say northern rounds maybe could use this after they promoted loads of stuff on the board um hemdal used to be kind of skellige based but skellige as far as we knew on the previous build didn't have anything to protect themselves from weather effects so placing all three wouldn't have been very good for them so it seems a bit of a situational one might be good for more uh, certain decks more than other decks monsters and northern rounds maybe square tail and skelliger not so much at the minute but the cards are changing a lot and we haven't seen skelliger in quite a long time same for square tail so i feel like we can't really use the old cards that we knew because everything's changing okay but i really i mean i think it's really really interesting and uh one thing to do with Square Tail though, if they do manage to be able to use this and they've still got the Nature's Gift special card, golden special cards, which are really rare, really powerful, presumably you could m use them multiple times because Nature's Gift acts as the previously spe uh, played special card. So a golden special card could be duplicated with Nature's Gifts if they still have it, which is really, you know, pretty nice. Okay, so the next card we've got is the Fire Elemental. This is a monster only card. Six strength, silver card, goes on the range row. Has the fire icon again. So again, I think this is a, a placeholder because loads of things are having this. And its, its ability is create a lesser fire elemental at the start of your turn. Okay, so let's just make sure you understand it. It creates a lesser fire elemental. We don't know what that is. This is six strength down from eight. So everyone's expecting lesser fire elemental to be about one, maybe two strength. Uh, but it's, it creates one at the start of your turn. So not round. But every one of your turns during a round, it's going to create one of these lesser fire elementals, providing the opponent can't get rid of this card. And to be honest, it's going to be pretty hard to get rid of this card, I would say. Um, it can't be epidemic, really, um, apart from the first turn you play it because every other subsequent turn it's going to create a lesser fire elemental which is most likely going to be one or two strengths so it kind of protects itself from epidemic with its spawned cards um, apart from the very first turn you play it because then you don't get a start of a turn so you've got a scorcher and if you've got something protecting it from the front it's going to be hard to scorch so this is a it's a pretty hard card i think um depending on how much strength they are and typically how many turns uh, you get during a round. We, I haven't done the maths in that, so you know I'm expecting maybe four or five turns because it only counts your turns. But yeah, that's that's a pretty powerful card, don't you think? 
Interesting, I like it. Seems like it's going to be really annoying to get rid of. So our next card is Milva, which is a 8 strength golden card for Scoyatel. It's loyal as well and goes on the siege row. Return the strongest non-gold unit on the battlefield to the hand of both you and your opponent. So what I'm expecting this to do is pick out the strongest non-gold unit card on your side of the board and put it back into your hand and get the strongest non-hero unit card on the opponent's side of the board and put that into its hand. It might be able to be interpreted as it picks the strongest non-gold unit on the battlefield and splits it, one to your opponent, one to you. I don't see I don't see any potential in doing that because then you know there's, there's small things like Wild Hunt Warrior. If you were monsters, which you can't be for this, but for example, um, you would get six because you've got other Wild Hunts in your hand, whereas the opponent would only get four. But that doesn't really feel like enough. So I'm really expecting it to be get the opponent's strongest and your strongest and give them into their respective hands, which could be used for some really good potential. Eight strength on this card is pretty nice. And the potential of giving your opponent their strongest, which is something crap, because they've been using special cards or something, and pulling something that's really strong in your back to your hand, a character with a nice ability that's really strong, is uh, it's pretty damn good. I mean, you could you could pull back like Nineki for Northern Realms, for example. You know, obviously you can't because it's Square Tower, but I don't I don't know any Square Tower cards because um, we haven't seen them in ages. But you get the point. You want to use it, so return some crap to the opponent and some great to you. And, and that, that seems really powerful. Really a lot of cool potential on this one. Return the strongest non-gold unit on the battlefield to the hand for both you and your opponent. So I think the crutch of the word there is for both of you and your opponent, okay? Um, return the strongest non-gold unit on the battlefield to the hand of... Yeah, so it's not of both you and your opponent, it's for both you and your opponent. I'm pretty sure I got that right. Um, no. so our next card is the Young Berserker. We finally get to see it, how they've chosen to keep it so far. Three strength, bronze card for Skelliger. You can see by the background. It's a melee and loyal, and it has the flame icon again, uh, which I think is just a temporary one for now. So this transforms this unit into a young bear if it is wounded and not destroyed. Okay, so again, wounded. This came into the last video. We didn't quite know what it meant. I said it could have been something if you medicate out, it could be wounded. I think that's not true anymore. I've changed my mind, and I think it's that when it's decreased in strength. We've got another example coming up, actually, and that'll really kind of bring this one back into the fold. But if it's wounded and not destroyed, so it kind of indicates that you can destroy it by wounding, okay? And a young bear is probably just a stronger version of this. You know, maybe six, eight strength, kind of like how it was in The Witcher 3. Um, it doesn't seem to have a muster or anything, so it's just a single card. Three strength is really quite low, and I don't know if you can wound your own units. Um, I think there is a card in this list which can, so that'll be really interesting. A nice bit of synergy there. So let's go on to the one which has nice synergy with the Young Berserker before we talk about the one that does wounding. This has a bit of a wound. so. 5 strength, silver card, Gremist. Goes on the siege row, is loyal as well. Its ability is a long one. Pick 3 non-gold units from your side of the battlefield and remove 2 strength from each of them. Add 3 to this unit for each one that you took off. So this is going to go up by 3, 6, 9, plus the 15, so that's 14 strength this is going to go up to. And I assume if you don't have enough cards it won't do it. Uh, it'll do the maximum it can. But uh, yeah, so you're, I think this is what you're doing. You're removing strength. It doesn't say like weakening, it says removing. So I believe that is the, the wounding option. You're wounding some of your cards. And that's where I think you will wound young berserkers optimally so they get transformed into a young bear, okay? And the thing about that is, is you don't want to destroy them. I feel like if you get rid of it, three of its strength, you have destroyed the card, it'll probably go to the graveyard. Okay, so the thing is, you can't wound it for three strength, otherwise it will get removed. However, Gremist only wounds it for two, which is absolutely perfect for the young Berserker. So I really feel there's a nice uh, bit of um, synergy with those two cards. So let's go on to an example card where you could potentially destroy the young Berserker. We have Imlarith, okay, he's been changed. 
Nice have golden card for monsters. He's a melee loyal card again. Choose a unit on the opponent's side of the board. Remove three strength from it. And remove one strength from all other units on the row. So if there's a young berserker with three strength, I presume that you could smash off and wound it for three strength, which happens to only have three, so it would send it down to zero, I assume destroying it. Okay, so this is a whole new mechanic in the game, wounding and destroying via wounding. It means you don't always need to scorch, and this is a targetable thing, um, but it's not always going to uh, remove something. Um, so he has 9 strength himself, which is pretty good. He's going to remove 3, which is basically 12 strength then. And he removes 1 strength from all other units on that row. I think we had a screenshot, which pretty much confirms that heroes can be um, reduced now. Because maybe there's no hero actually in the game anymore. They're called gold cards. So um, this might even also affect heroes. The hero's strength might not be cemented in stone, in the current build at least. So if we just look at this screenshot for a second, we can see on the top row here, there's two gold cards. There's some sort of dragon with five strength and Zoltan the Brawler with eight strength. They're golden cards and they're not getting affected by weather effects. So it feels like they can't be affected by debuffed, you know, like by weathers and stuff. However, if you look down even further, we have Zoltan Animal Tamer in the fog. He's not getting affected either. However, the card below that is Yennefer. And she, is been, she has been decreased. She's on four and it's red. So what we can assume from this is that golden cards can't be affected by weathers and maybe like base discouraged and stuff like that. But they can be wounded by uh, specific uh, card abilities which wound opponents. So that's, that's a revelation that is. That is a very interesting revelation, okay? So they can be affected by wounding specifically and if they're really low strength heroes maybe you can even destroy them with a wound but they can't be affected by weather effects and maybe discourage and maybe you know things like that and they can't be buffed by commander's horns and stuff like that but they can be wounded amazing amazing so he's definitely 12 strength you could probably get him up to what 15 um maybe like 20 if they have a lot of poor infantry and things that create tons and tons of cards um, might be really good for that fire elemental that we saw earlier and all its little lesser fire elementals but you know so interesting I like it I mean I like all the cards I don't think I've come across many cards that I don't like operator probably and uh, monster deck ability pulling heroes over and maybe the card draw too but they're not cards but the final card we've got is Dijkstra eight strength hero card is siege and loyal all right. There's a lot of evidence that they're trying to remove spies. Um, the developers have said that they, with the caretaker, they said that card advantage is really good. And when drawing cards to your hand and gaining an extra turn, that is so powerful that the strength needed to offset that is it would be too great that you're giving the opponent. And so they don't want an over reliance of spies in. Um, in the game like it was in Witcher 3 and due to their internal testing spies still sort of created a necessity you kind of needed to take spies to get card advantage and the meta game sort of drifted that way so they've decided to try and go in another direction with spies and this is where Dijkstra comes in so he's loyal and not a, a traditional spy anymore remove gold status from every unit on the battlefield and add plus one strength to this unit for each okay so remove gold status Clearly very, very good against an enemy Northern Rounds that has promoted a lot of units. Presumably they would lose their plus two that they got from their new Northern Rounds deck ability. And uh, he gets plus one strength for all of them. So, I mean, that situation is really good. And there might be something for removing your own promotion cards and giving him loads of strength. But if they lose that plus two, it doesn't seem worth it. However... Apart from that, it seems very situational. There's not going to be that many heroes on the board in one go, I don't think. Um, unless you're fighting a Northern Rounds player. Other, other decks only really have four heroes in for the most part so far, so it's not really that good of a card. But um, the fact that you could remove a golden status 
okay, which means you can get Geralt Swordmaster, remove its gold status, and then possibly scorch it. It is a lot of cards just to try and get rid of that one card, but you're giving yourself eight strength and possibly, you know, buff him up a little bit more before you scorch. So, I like the interestingness and, uh, I, I kind of agree. I see where CD Projekt Red is coming from when they're trying to get rid of spies. Because I can see a little bit of a meta game coming where if you don't have spies in your deck, your opponent is going to outstall you, just basically. So everyone has to have spies in their deck, and it you know creates less freedom, really. So um, I can see where they're going, and I trust that they're going to do uh, a decent job. So what do you think? about all those, eh? I think they were they were really good. I'd like to thank Mikhail again for sending me those and um, apparently did I, I don't know if I mentioned that he apparently got them from the Kill the Servers build number one. I don't know how he got those from there because we were playing on the build number two. I mean number three, sorry. So, but yeah. Thanks for watching everyone. I've been King Black Tooth and stay tuned for more Gwent content in the days to come. See you guys.